Hey! Hey, what's up, bro? Come on, man. Come on, take a seat. Bro, you want a drink? Oh, yeah. What? Coffee? That'd be nice. You want tea? Yeah, bro. What's the tea? Want some milk? Yeah. Yo. Bro, have you ever had oil? Gee, you're actually broke eh? Come sit down, I love oil, man. Bro, I don't worry, bro. Bro, check us a class. Yeah, I love oil, man. and welcome to another episode of The Ditch. I was just wondering, why are you wearing a suit today? Oh, I got the mean ass gears on today. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Let's take a look at what's coming up next on this episode. This week, we catch up with former Mount Albert Lion, Sebastian Sewer about making the move over the ditch. Hopefully I can make my debut at the end of this year. He's one of the most respected minds in the game, working quietly in the background. We chat with ex-Kiwi workhorse, Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith doesn't need any help. He can do it all himself. And proud Māori Samoan, Royce Hunt is in the studio to talk about rural life in small town Aussie to now playing for glamour club, the Cronulla Sharks. Well, yeah, I think ever since that day, um, everybody knows not to go too far with me because your, your car will end up in pieces. <laughs> up, up. Cronella. How much do they pay you to support each team? Up up, Cronella. Let's see if they made this week's highlights. I remember being asked to play Origin, but I said, nah, I'm all good. You guys are too serious. It's hammer time in Adelaide. Queensland on the board first. What a game. And also awesome to see our sister Tasman Grace scoring for Queensland. Tasman pumps the fist, celebrates the try. Sorry about it. The NBA Finals are on, but that's not the only sport where you get to dribble. Just ask Dragons winger Ravaloa, and Brian Toor shows us his Samoan moonwalk. I don't know if he made contact with it. He was facing his own goal line and tried to kick it the other way. Unlucky oops. Raiders halfback Jamal Fogarty's secret ninja training finally pays off as he bags a double with his sniper the kicks. Ground, it's hit the post again, and he scored again! Jamal Fogarty is Sorry about it. Just when you think Ronaldo breaks rule number one of Top Gun by leaving his wingman, he then does this. Wow, what a save. That's one of Ronaldo's best plays of the year. Yeah. Sorry about it. I'm not sure how things are like back in the village, but surely something's up. Oh, Papali'i trying to put a monster shot. Evasive enough was the other Papali'i. And how's this for using your head? North New South Wales Cup winger Alfred Smalley uses his head to score in the corner. Bang! <laughs> in your forehead of Alfred Smalley. <laughs> oh, talk about using your head. That's what I call a face ball. You get it? Sorry about it and sorry about those highlights again. Here's our story on Seb Sewer living out his dream trying to crack the NRL. So I moved to Newcastle in November last year for pre-season with um, NRL. I had about seven, eight weeks there. Yeah, with, and it was really good just helping me develop my game and um, just understand the game more. And then I sort of carried the knowledge I gained into my first trial games and I played pretty well. And then, yeah, I, just, I made the cup team for round one, so yeah, it's going pretty well. Did it feel like a big jump going from club to that next step? In yeah, yeah, it was. It was a really big jump. You don't really realise, but there's a lot more technical aspects in the game, like wrestling and yeah, like tackle tech and stuff like that, that we learnt a lot in pre-season. Fitness was a big thing as well. A lot of hill running, sand dunes and stuff like that, yeah. So I got, I lost like 6 kgs, I think. Yeah, so a lot fitter now than I was. Having the, the boys with NRL experience um, encouraging you and teaching you and even just playing alongside them is pretty surreal. Who I look at the most 
from my position because I'm a middle sort of like Leo Thompson and all those boys there. Thompson has obliterated the replacement hooker. They were real nice at training as well and good to talk to and uh, also the Slafiri brothers. Yeah, I get along heaps with them. They helped me out when I first moved over. They took me under their wing and really helped me out. Do you think it helps with the transition having those PI boys in there? It helps a lot because you can sort of relate to them and they're signing a lot of uh, Polynesian boys recently so there's like a community of us boys there. Yeah, it was always a goal of mine during pre-season to make the cup side in round one. So that's a goal to take in the end. My next goal would be to debut this year for NRL. So yeah, I've still got a little way to go to work towards that. But yeah, it's possible. So I just need to work hard and keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, and hopefully I can make my debut at the end of this year. Yeah, just got to keep working hard towards that. What a great story from young Sebastian Sewer on his journey from local rugby league in New Zealand to New South Wales Cup. And someone that can relate to his journey is the man who we have in this fuddy right now, big Cronulla Sharks front rower, Royce Hunt. Jeff Arno, thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey growing up and getting into uh, NRL? Yeah, um, a bit of a different one. Um, I grew up in a small town in Western Australia called Kalgoorlie. Didn't play rugby league or, or much sport growing up. Um, it was an AFL dominated place and you know, my old man would um, drive me to Perth uh, maybe twice a year, which was a six hour, six hours one way, six hours back, just to play like a park footy game. So we went maybe two or three times a year and I'd go up for the trials to, to make the WA teams. When I was 15, uh, I made the WA team Came over to the Nationals over in Sydney. Um, got picked for the, the Australian Merit team. Um, there's a few clubs that were interested. My dad was goes, yeah, you're going to get the Bulldogs. I said, yes, yeah, sweet. Getting out of a little small town and didn't know, you know, going to the big smoke, big city. I was excited. Uh, coming over, didn't know anything about like rugby league. Didn't know what Harold Matz was. Didn't know what SG Ball was. And yeah, went through, went through the Bulldog system. Um, Finished my 20s there, two years of 20s, and then actually signed, signed with Mounties my, my first year out of 20s, and they were the Canberra Raiders feeder club. I remember when I finished 20s, I, I didn't really want to play anymore. Um, you know, I was just working heaps, you know, a lot of training, and I was, I was a bit sick of it. Um, but Pete Maholland, the one who brought me over from WA, he was, he was at the Raiders at that time, and he took me to Mounties for a meeting. I went there out of respect to him, ready to say no. Um, left that meeting, signed to Mounties for the year. Played the whole year at Cup. That following year, I uh, got a call from Ricky Stewart and he said uh, that we've got a pathways kind of thing. Uh, we take one person from Mounties up to train NRL for a month um, and we'll just see how you go. And I went up there, that month turned into two months. Two months turned into three. Ended up debuting that year. Um, signed another two years there. And now I'm at the mighty Cronulla Sharks. What up, up. was oh, up, 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 Cronulla, is it? <laughs> um, <laughs> what was said in that meeting that made you change your mind? Because obviously you walked in not wanting to play anymore. So does, how did someone sway your decision? It was, um, it was pretty simple, actually. It just goes, um, look, we're going to, we, you're going to sign. And you know, if you feel the same way in, in a month or two, then, then that's it. Like, we'll rip it up and you can go on your way. So I just said, yeah, sweet, I'll give it a crack, and yeah, went from there. And you obviously enjoyed it to carry on Yeah, so Mount that. Mounties is a great club for me. Um, you know, I fell in love with the game again there. Uh, played cup all year, and yeah, obviously reaped awards from the back of it. Was it the people around you, or the coach, or...? Um, you know, the coach at Mounties is really, really good. Um, Steve Antonelli. Uh, it's like a real family-orientated club when, when he was there, so I loved it. Allen comes up on his right-hand side. I was born in New Zealand, I was born in Kaitaia. We came over to Australia when I was about six or eight years old and I was always sort of big but I used to be quick as well. 
played for 13 years. All up. Yeah, 13 years. How many clubs? Um, I've got the record actually, so it's seven, I think. I always thought I wanted to manage. I always thought that we needed something different. And we, I mean, in the guys that I hung out with, the guys that I grew up with, you know, Maldives, Aboriginals, in, in the Islander boys. Myself and Hopper caught up, and at that time, um, Will was coming through, Will Hopper. And we just started to plan it and put it together and how we wanted to, what we wanted to stand for, what our, our morals and our integrity, um, yeah, our core values. What we structured to start this was putting the player first to be respected, to form a good relationship, not based on a signed document, to talk openly and, and, and project what you want and what's important for you and your family and your partner and your parents. It was hard at the start because it was a change and I was accountable. I was accountable to these guys. The things that I experienced back then was disrespect to the player you're disrespecting him, you're disrespecting his family, and then myself as well. And now, so many years down the track. Oh, I have good working relationships with them all, mate. We just got a clear understanding. It's open transparency. The end of it, rugby league agents and players, it's a, it's a buy or seller market. How are you gonna make him better? How are you gonna help him get longevity? How are you gonna help him set his legacy up? How are you gonna treat him, you know, get him to yeah, be a better person. Giving them the opportunity that I had and with a bit more guidance so that you can capitalise on it and make the most of it and you utilise your, your status, really understanding what sort of power you have as a leader for, for people, you know what I mean? I'll talk to anyone. Anyone can contact me about talking about what it takes because you don't need to reinvent the wheel. I've got the blueprint for you and I'll pass it on to you. As long as you stay true to yourself and the people you're representing, don't have an agenda, don't cut a corner. Just utilise yourself, your status, your learnings and everything you've been through to make someone else better. So I encourage anyone and everyone and there's so many different roles that you can make a difference in. Bro, season's been going pretty well for you guys thus far. Tell me a little bit about Craig Fitzgibbon, your coach. Two years in now, how has he helped you? How has he helped the Cronulla Sharks? Um, yeah, Fitzy, he's a, he's a real good coach. Eh? He's, he's good with his words. He's good at talking and um, getting his message across the line. Um, he's definitely unlocked a... Uh, aspect of my game that um, I didn't think I would in the NRL so far. Uh, you know, but you know, for a second year head coach, he's he's doing pretty mean um, in our eyes, and you know he's he's uh, one of those fellas that when he talks, everybody listens. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can continue on some good form for this season, and um, hopefully play some decent semi-finals this year, and you know, hopefully get a premiership for for us and Fitzy. A lot of um Polynesian boys there, uh, Māori boys as well. How, how does that help you on your journey when it comes to, I guess, your week-to-week -week training, your day-to-day -day living? Do you hang out with any of the boys? Do you hang out with the Aussie boys? Like, well, how does that, you know, our colour guide us or help us? Yeah. Um, well, Cronulla, there's, there's not really many groups that, like in our playing group, um, everyone, everyone's one big group, you know, everyone loves each other. But, you know, having having our Islander boys and our, our Māori boys together. It's just, it's like being at home, like with your brothers. You, um, you get your pranksters. Um, Ronaldo's one of them. Uh, he's a little cheeky mouth. Wingers, eh? Wingers, my bro. <laughs> only good for talking, it. eh? Only, only good for talking and scoring tries. <laughs> he's a big mouth, but uh, he's got a big heart too. So, you know, he's got a lot of love to give to the boys and um, it's good to have him around. And, and our, our brothers, you know, it's... Um, it's hard to get homesick when you're at, when you're at training. Um, you know, we get the, the new boys that come in, the young boys that come up, um, and we just help them up, help them through, 
guide them through, make sure they're not homesick if they need anything. Um, it's always good to have, have people that have walked in those shoes already to, to give you some pointers or tips to get through. But yeah, it's, it's really awesome um, to see how much of a bond that we can make and how strong we are together rather than like apart, really. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty mean. Your, um, your winger, Ronaldo, <laughs> you were telling me earlier about this, this story, you know, the yeah. prankster, like you yeah. said, he's a prankster. Oh, tell us a quick story about it. So before I got there, Ronnie was, was the, the prankster, you know, no one really, really gave it back to him. And uh, he didn't really know me that well, so uh, <laughs> now he does. I've got a lot of time, eh? And um, I was in rehab at the time. And he was just being cheeky mouth, we were giving it back to each other, a bit of banter, it was, it was funny. And then I came back in from, from the gym and all my clothes, my bag, my boots, my shoes are all in the ice bath. Oh. And I was like, okay. I walked outside and they were getting pumped. It was like a big session out in the field and I was like, okay. Went and grabbed his keys from his locker, took his car around the corner, uh, put it on a jack. Took the tires off, <laughs> rolled them down to the other side, and I went home and left it on the jack. <laughs> he come out and his car was on the jack after a big day, and uh, yeah, he kept asking me if I did it. I kept denying it, and then um, yeah, one of the boys wanted to go get the CCTV footage from the cameras at the stadium. You just see me walking out with his keys, get in his car, and drive around the corner. <laughs> it was it was funny. Well, yeah, I think ever since that day. Um, Everybody knows not to go too far with me because your, your car will end up in pieces. <laughs> Braley finds Royce Hunt who spins. He plants it down. Hunt closing in, closing in, scoring. Hello, the Sharks. They'll try and hammer their way over with Hunt and he's got it down as well. You used the word beastly earlier. Well, Royce Hunt in beast mode has scored Cronulla's second try. Rayleigh gets an offload, gives it to Royce Hunt. Look at his score in back-to-back -back weeks, and he does. Rayleigh to Hunt, goes short. There's big Royce Hunt. It's a steamroller. Royce Hunt, powerful close to the line. Brayley, front man, oh my goodness, too big and too strong, Royce Hunt. Māori, Samoan heritage, bro, what does that mean to you and your family? Um, yeah, so mum's, mum's Māori, dad's Sa, uh, um, I grew up in Kalgoorlie, didn't really learn e either side. Um, you know, been away from, from both sides of the family over there. Um, you know, obviously I know the Samoan and Māori blood run through me. Um, I'm always proud and, and staunch on those, uh, always keen to represent where I can. And um, yeah, so to represent both sides on the highest level uh, was, was a real honour for me and my family. Right, tell us a little bit about that, um, the Indigenous uh, week that you had being in the Māori team. How, how was that for you? Obviously, like you said, you, you weren't around it, but how did, that week, how did that week help you reconnect or help you feel that you belong to something? Yeah, um, my second year, so the first year there, uh, last year, in the Māori's camp when I got the call, it was mean, um, like going in, you know, just listening and, and being a part of it and obviously like reconnecting with with everything and just listening to the stories of the boys and and like feeling like mean feeling mean for the whole week like just heaps of mana and then going into the, the camp this year was was a bit different because i, I kind of knew what was coming but it's me and it's probably one of the best weeks to be a part of um as a as a moldy man to just learn and always, you know, reconnect with, with home soil and, and our people. Well, just on the back of uh, some of the stuff about not actually living in New Zealand, how, how, do you, how did you feel growing up in Kalgoorlie and I guess it's similarities to some of the kids, Kiwi kids that we have that actually are born in Australia? How, what, what does that, how does that connect to, to home? How do you feel when your connection to home? Um, yeah, I think it's just like a, a feeling inside, you know. You can always, you can always feel when you're home. Whenever we, we, we come back to the Aotearoa, you always feel like it's home. I mean, obviously, growing up there, it's a lot different. Um, 
Well, you know, we, we don't get the luxuries of the, the pies at the bakeries here. But, you know, um, I think it's just you know inside when you're home. Go-to pie then, if you're talking about pie, mm. what's the go-to pie? Um, steak and cheese. Kind steak, of and cheese. steak and cheese, heaps of cheese, heaps of steak, big always, chunky steaks. Always, yeah. <laughs> yep. Where's the bakery? You go to the closest one off the airport? Yeah, <laughs> Gee, straight up. The first, first one, one the first one I see, bro, always pull in. <laughs> no matter where we are. Bro, you had obviously that success in the World Cup for Samoa. Did it mean you wanted to represent Samoa even more, even going back to Samoa? You know, again, what about your Māori side? How was your family and Tautoku and you be obviously representing your, your father's side? Yeah, um, both sides of my family were, were extremely happy. Um, you know, I've got, I've got heaps of mates that are all different nationalities. Um, they were all flying the Samoan flag. Everywhere, everywhere we've seen, there was Fijians with the Samoan flag, <laughs> Tongans, some Tongans, you know, not the salty <laughs> ones, but some Tongans. Um, you know, they were just happy for... Uh, Pacific nation to mm. to make the grand final in a World Cup and um, you know, to bring all of the islands together um, was was pretty special. Um, I loved loved being a part of that. Uh, you know, my my Maori family uh, they loved every part of it. Uh, they rode the journey with us as well. You know, I will, I will check in with them every day or every week, and you know, they they just very proud of me um, for representing my father's side. You know, it doesn't matter if we win or lose any time, you know, we're always proud to be Samoan or Māori. Being Māori and Samoan, was it a tough decision? Because obviously you're eligible for Samoa and New Zealand. How did you make that decision? The uh, first one came knocking was Sa. Yeah? So, uh, fair always, enough. Yeah, I always fair said, enough. bro, I always said, um, whoever comes knocking first, I, I would go. So loyal to Sa now? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. So no, no chance of representing New Zealand. <laughs> no, represent New Zealand. Whoever comes Let's knocking go. again, my bro. Whoever calls well, first. Just, just let me know. I'll get, <laughs> I'll get you in there. Eh? Call yeah. Madge. Eh? <laughs> we'll call Madge. Thanks again for coming on the couch with us. Just before we head off, is there anyone that you want to shout out to? Local businesses, friends, Fano, anyone like that? Yeah, I got a few friends. I uh, have a little few, few little businesses. Uh, Fox Active, best active wear in the game, and low tech, quickest socks in the game. And one last question. Can you do a manu, uh, or are you the only Māori? We know that can't do one. I think I'd be the only Māori you know that I can't do a manu. Uh, growing up in Kalgoorlie, there's nothing but red dirt there. <laughs> no pools? No pools. <laughs> <laughs>